I want to get to the seven pillars now because it really captured my attention when I saw this. So you've developed this framework called the seven pillars of ownership. Let's start with that word ownership. Why is ownership so important? Have you ever rented a house in your life? And to the listeners, just think, have you ever rented a house? Yep. And almost everybody raises their hand and says, yes. Well, when you rented that house, did you ever think about putting on an addition? Did you ever think about adding a deck or a patio? And when you rent a house, those aren't things you think about, right? I mean, Mick, have you ever done any of those things at a place you rented? No, I, I keep it very clean and, and leave it cleaner than I found it, but I don't, don't improve it. That's for sure. So renters are okay for the organization, but what I just described isn't what renters do, that's what owners do, mm. right? And that's the power of ownership within organizations. I define ownership as the extreme emotional and psychological commitment to the team, the values, the purpose of the organization, where people do things because it's important to them, not because they're told to do it. And this is a very healthy style of ownership. This isn't me, my, I, this is our, us, we style of ownership where people realize at times we need to lead, at times we need to follow. And so then when you have purpose and meaning and pride, what it does for the organization is just unmatched from anything I've seen. So we're always trying to create this feeling it really, it's a feeling, it's a tie, it's a connection, it's this emotion of ownership within our people. Fear is the kryptonite of psychological safety. Psychological safety means that we can show up as our full selves. We can ask for help, we can admit when we don't know the answer. And so when we have these high levels of psychological safety, we can have radical candor. You know, as we talk in this interview on the podcast, you can say to me, non-offensive. You know, Danny, I really don't agree with that. I think this, or I think that and we can just have an open conversation. And I remain curious, always looking to learn. And we have that mindset of curiosity within the team. So people can show up as their full, true, authentic selves, willing to contribute. Belonging means that we are accepted as part of the group and the team for who we are. And I think there's several um, critical drivers of belonging, belonging, feeling seen, heard, valued, accepted, cared for, supported, and appreciated. These seven drivers are so, so important. Belonging, according to the research, I don't remember the lady's name whose book it was in, belonging is the number one driver of meaning. When I was trying to fit in very early on in my career at the Dixon Police Department, I was surviving, right? Mm. I was surviving. When, when I knew and felt like I belonged, that's the area where I can thrive and where everybody can thrive. I think a lot of leader, leaders struggle with being able to click, clearly articulate the purpose and meaning of their organization. They're a little better at who they're serving. But what is it about their work that matters, that drives meaning? What is it about their work that's driving impact? And I think we have to get super, super clear on that. And so the first thing we got to do within an organization is get clear on what we do, why it matters, why it's important, and clear on why the position is important. So the next one is confidence. And this can be interpreted in a few different ways. So I want to hold space for you here. Tell us what confidence means to you and why it's one of the pillars. If we're not confident, there's zero way that we can show up and give our full gifts. And so if we don't have confidence, if, if we've got fixed mindset instead of growth mindset, right? Um, we cannot show up and give our true gifts. And as leaders, we got to understand that yes, confidence comes from within inside of people, but we can have a tremendous impact over the confidence of another person. When we empower other people, they begin to step forward and take the actions and proactively take actions to improve themselves, to improve their team, to improve the organization, to improve the service to our customer and to our community. We don't want our people waiting around for us to tell them what to do. We want to create an environment where they have a job and we trust them and we give them the autonomy to be able to do that job. We give them the training, the coaching, everything they need. But it, it, it has to do with also looking at what are stretch moments? What are areas and meaningful assignments 
that we can give and give responsibility to them that allow them to grow. And when you when you not only give an assignment or a task or an area to somebody, but you actually give them full authority and responsibility to execute it, that's very empowering. So innovation got on the list because when you think about being committed to excellence and great organizations, we've got to be committed to getting 1% better every single day. Mm. Change is our friend. Change is where true growth occurs. And when you think about innovation as part of ownership, this is where people are proactively looking for challenges, for seeing challenges and solving them before they come and before they exist. This is where we're getting 1% better every day. And as I like to say, adding layers of greatness to our great community, to your great business, to your great team, to, to, to your great organization. Commitment. So it ties back into people support what they create. High levels of dedication, high levels of loyalty, right? The organizations that can drive this ownership, uh, retention isn't, isn't a problem. And recruitment, and the problems with that start to go away because your people become your greatest recruiters. Mm. Like you become the place in your industry where people want to work. And this commitment is where that passionate discretionary effort comes in. It's where people are willing to stay over or work through the night if we have to, to cross the finish line on something important. It's where in these really difficult moments where, you know, a few of us are doing the job of three people that we stick to it and we push through it. And it's a whatever it takes mindset, because at the end of the day, we have ownership and we, we will not let whatever it is we're working on fail. We won't let it fail. Hey everyone, it's Mick Spears from The Leadership Project, where we empower leaders with the knowledge and skills that they need to create amazing teams and amazing workspaces. If you're enjoying our content, please do remember to hit like, subscribe, and that little notification bell so that you can be notified of all of our future videos. In the meantime, please do take care, look out for each other, and join us on this journey as we learn together and lead together.